I recently made a video listing 30 of my favorite comics YouTubers in response to the most common question that I've gotten from my audience on the channel. The link for that video is in the description, but for this video I wanted to try and extend an olive branch to uh, those people who have commented criticizing my takes, my channel in general. I admit I have a very difficult time seeing most of the points, guys in Comics Gate, the fandom menace and stuff like that. I, I, I struggle to see their points as valid because most of it simply doesn't match reality. But the most common criticism that I've gotten in response to my criticisms of Comics Gate, the fandom menace, etc., it's a pretty universal and uncontroversial statement. And since we agree on this statement, I hope we can work together to make the media that we love just a little better. We just want good stories. This one statement, I, I don't think a single person would disagree with. So let's get some good context and ask, how can we make sure that we only ever get good stories? Pro SJW feminist fans of Birds of Prey. Trash, woke trash movies. Ursula hates Doomcock. First, I kindly ask that you hit that old likey thumb boy, and if you're not subscribed, which almost half of you aren't, I really hope you do. I've got a lot of exciting content already in progress, so it will continue to come regularly. I'm also going to begin regular streams, so it would mean the world to me if you'd subscribe and hit the bell for notifications, because I'm really trying to grow the channel right now, and your help would be extraordinary. Now, on with the show. We just want good stories. Who can argue that? Who doesn't want good stories? In fact, I'd go further and say we want great stories. So since we're all in agreement, I believe we can form a, a sort of coalition of advocates and activists, all sharing the same goal. I'm a solutions-based guy. I'm compelled to solve problems when they arise, especially when it comes to fiction that I love and have loved all my life. Star Wars, Marvel, DC, Star Trek, these are the pillars of my fandom. And I don't want to see these corporations put bad stories out and kill these franchises. So. I came up with an action item list. Make these your primary action items. Kind of an agenda, if you will, that I believe could get us to our goal. First, we have to determine what is a good story. Some say a good story is defined by how well told the story is, or how tangible do the characters feel? Is the pacing entertaining? Is the dialogue dramatic yet realistic? I think we all want these. But now we have to define what well told means. The logical thing to do, I believe, is to look at consensus, right? Majority rule and all. So if the consensus on, let's say, Birds of Prey, the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn, is that critics and audiences rated it as above average, can we claim that as objectively good storytelling? Sure, if we base it on majority alone, but what of the others who thought less of it? The 22% of critics and 22% of audiences who thought it was awful. Are they simply wrong? And if they're wrong, does that negate our claim of objective goodness being a thing? Or is it the majority that's wrong? Maybe the majority is lying. I suppose you'd have to concoct some bizarre conspiracy theory about paying critics and I guess audiences to lie about their experience with the film. That's kind of silly, but I don't think any rational person would make such a claim with zero evidence. So would a film or book or show or comic need to be rated 100% or a perfect 10 to be considered good? Well, let's look at the two most commonly used resources for scoring films, IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes. Not only are their highest rated films very different from one another, not a single film on either list has been rated a perfect 100% in Rotten Tomatoes case or a perfect 10 in the case of IMDb. Now, I personally would rate Shawshank Redemption as a perfect 10, and many others probably would too. But on IMDb, it's only a 9.4, so what does that tell us? That there's a few troublemakers out there trying to tarnish Stephen King's flawless record of book-to-movie adaptations? Maybe a cult of weirdos who believe Tim Robbins is the Antichrist. 
We can't be certain who these villains are, but I assume that once we enforce good stories and only good stories, those people will be rounded up and put against the wall. That's a problem down the road that we'll have to address in a most brutal fashion. The next logical question is, what mechanism would we install to gauge the quality of stories? How will we decide the parameters for good stories? I'd say we need some kind of council endowed by the government with the power to measure the worth of stories before they ever see the light of day. This would prevent a single bad story from ever staining our minds and taking precious moments from our finite lifespans. But who sits on the council? How many council members are there? How are the members decided? I suggest we begin training children as soon as they enter school to differentiate between good and bad stories. Of course, we'll have to retrain teachers as well, unless they get all uppity like, That's absurd. You can't force children to agree with your notions of good storytelling. Guess where those teachers go? That's right. We cannot suffer these fools' arrogance any longer in our new paradigm. Okay, so we have our council established, presumably comprised of YouTubers who make four hour long movie review videos. But we have to make sure these council people are all on the same page in order to avoid any clash in the process. I mean, imagine if two members don't like a thing, but the rest do. The chaos would be impossible to navigate. When the arbiters of our story goodness can't even agree, there would inevitably be a systemic breakdown that could very well see us return to the archaic days of movie studios and publishers mocking us with their bad stories. I'm open to suggestions on this one, guys. I honestly am not smart enough to figure this problem out. Maybe it's all the soy. I leave this one to the alphas with your personal constitution strong enough to make these hard calls. Speaking of constitutions, the next step is pretty radical, but I see no other way to create the future we want. That pesky First Amendment has plagued art since the founding of this country, and I think it's high time we break the bonds which hold us back from non-stop, ubiquitous, universally loved stories. God, what a utopia that would be. Don't even, don't even think about messing with that second, though. Now, on to the messy part. Things will get very ugly at this stage. Another reason we have to get rid of the First Amendment is because it also applies to corporations. Even if we round up all the bad writers, corporations are people. Thanks to the 2010 SCOTUS ruling in the Citizens United case, corporations have the same rights as individuals do. So that means stupid free speech applies to them too. Marvel, Lucasfilm, they're people just like you and me. Once that freedom of speech issue is out of the way, our beautiful vision of a world without bad stories would require us to remove the economic rights enjoyed by massive corporations such as Disney Marvel Lucasfilm, WBDC, CBS Star Trek, and many, many more. In fact, the only way to be sure is to take control over these corporations by force if necessary. And you know how rich people are. They don't like to give up anything. So we definitely have to use force. We'll need to figure out what to do with the executives, the shareholders, and the goddamn SJW writers and producers infesting those companies like little blue-haired cockroaches with pronouns in their bio. Oh, duh. That's what the wall is for. But once we've done all these crucial tasks, I firmly believe that we could rest easy in the comfort of knowing we'll never have to be subjected to another bad story ever again once the nation and the rest of the world see what we've created for them none would dare to face the wrath of our new world order, one built upon the most eternal truth. We just want good stories. But let me know what you think of my plan in the comments. Do you have a way to make sure that our council is always on the same page? Maybe at gunpoint? Sign it! Sign your name! Sign it! If you'd like to support this work, head over to patreon.com slash forcedadversity. Or you can become a channel member by hitting the join button below this video. Alternatively, if you just want to buy me a cup of coffee, you can head to actualcontext.live and send a one-time donation. Enormous thanks to my patrons, B. Ratcliffe, Zeon's Ghost, Alan Schwarzweller, Daniel Liu, Alex Jones, Trash Rat, Recorus Felving, Elizabeth, and Nathan Russell.